picture is out and uh, we have, um, you know, Margaret and Messy G and uh, Rachel Fuda on one side. We have Teresia Cabral and Aiden on the other side, even though we know that Cabral jumped ship and she ain't with Teresa or Aiden. Her and Aiden came into a little fist fight on the season. Uh, that'll probably be edited out as things often are. And we have in the middle, Adolo Catania. Now, a couple of you are slipping into my DMs having like, hit the pipe too much high as a kite saying that this is the end for Teresa that the whole thing is being changed and that at the end of the season the show is going to move forward being centered on Dolores Catania and that's why she's in the middle don't make me laugh please don't make me laugh having said that Dolo has come into what they want. Now, whereas we all thought she was boring for like 20 years, sleeping at the wheel, because, I mean, she can't pick a side to save her life. She is what they want. They want Crystal Kong. They want, I mean, Kyle is a great housewife. They want you to, to just, they don't want you to get too messy. So everyone who thinks Crystal's so boring, she ain't being fired. So Dolo is actually in 2024 going into the new toxic season of, of leaving the toxicity of New Jersey, heading into another toxic season, even though Melissa and Teresa don't speak. Dolo is what they want. Just don't pick a side. Don't get nasty. Don't slip into anyone's D. I mean, Dolo is her job is secure because we have Louis Riella slipping into Trey Fab's DMs and saying, make sure you tag Walmart because that's where the bitch makes the most of her money. I mean, I can't make this shit up. So Dolo is actually what they want, who is like, you know, afraid to speak out against anyone. That is what they want. Is she in the center because the whole show is going to be centered around her after this season when they change the entire cast around? Are they changing the cast after this season? Yes. Is Dolo like the centerpiece? No. Does she have job security? Probably. Probably. I'm not sure about that for sure, but probably She's in the center because we have two divided camps that don't fucking speak. And yeah, Cabral jumps ship. We can't have four people and then Aiden and Teresa on the other side. So stop reading into Dolores Catania being in the middle and thinking that like the whole thing is now going to be Dolores's show. That's literally the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. And it's also not true. Okay. It's just not true. Being on the end, which I mean... Hey, Teresa, we just had Potomac and John. Giselle didn't sit next uh, to Andy. She's still getting over that. Did you all see Karen Huger got a facelift? I mean, and I didn't even read the fine print, but like, is this after her, her DUI? I mean, is Karen Huger like trying to change the narrative and like, that's what we're talking about? I mean, did you see the tree? The bitch took out the tree almost. I don't know. Good look for her if she got a facelift. I don't know if I ever want a facelift. Maybe. Not really. It kind of scares me. But being on the end, Teresa, Fuda, uh, Rachel Fuda posted that the season is coming back and she posted the cast picture and she cut out Teresa. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. But um, good job, Rachel. You, you have it in you. I didn't really doubt that Rachel had it in her. I think Rachel... I mean, her and Cabral really are both apt to play the game. I almost think Rachel is setting herself up more for the future. I almost think she is, fits the definition long-term of what is going to work on this show. That's just my gut. I need to watch this season and see what Cabral does. But I think Rachel really, she's young She's attractive. She has John Fuda. So you have that husband that's not afraid to speak out. But bravo. I mean, I would do the same thing. Cut out your enemy. You know, we see what happens. And there's a lot of stuff also online in the underbelly of the New Jersey internet of, you know, and people, by the way, are sending me. They're slipping into John Fuda's DMs. And John Fuda is actually responding to them and just saying, like, Really very polite. I mean, I'm not slipping in with any, I don't have a Finsta, but people, a lot of people are showing me they are slipping into John Fuda's DMs and saying things like this and that and like, fuck you because we're pro-Teresa, the tree huggers. 
And John Fuda is, I have to say, from what's been sent to me, very respectfully responding to people and saying, I respect your opinion. Please just wait to watch the season and just please wait to watch what happens. And there's a lot that happens that you guys don't know. And he's implying all this other stuff which surfaced with all the bloggers that, you know, apparently, and I don't know, I, I really, the more information, I'm not going to spend my time tracing every last detail, but it seems, you know, it goes back to what they said on the reunion that, you know, the accusation, which continues this season is that Louie and Teresa somehow got involved or Louie le allegedly in, you know, going after his baby mama and putting her back in jail. I don't know if that's true, how the halfway house works, but that's the implication. And when John says things like this, that's what it's implying. Again, it's implying all this dirty stuff is happening off the show. And I mean, who knows? But John is really, I've seen the DMs respectively saying to people like, listen, just bear with us because trust me, there's a lot of underhanded stuff. And my wife and I are straight shooters and we will tell it to you, to your face. And everyone's going to say, I'm like, I'm really friends with Margaret now and I'm coming for, I'm just looking at the facts. They change every week because you know, I'm a flip-flopper. But I've seen these DMs of people that are slipping into Fuda's DMs and he is responding very politely to everyone and just saying like, you are entitled to your opinion, but I am telling you there's a lot of underhanded stuff which has happened that come out. Please watch the season before you reserve your opinion. And, you know, then if you still are anti me and my wife, by all means. So I don't know. I kind of respect that. It's... He's not being nasty, right? He's not being nasty at all. Um, okay, my DoorDash is here. Come, come. Can you just leave it outside? Thank you. Sorry. Of course, I knew my DoorDash was going to come while I was recording. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, so that's that. We're almost done anyway. And the last thing that I want to uh, talk about is apparently Andy Cohn the genius that he is, being a little sarcastic, has come to a solution and a statement. Apparently he made a statement. I think it was at BravoCon. I don't know why this is fucking surfacing now, but I don't know when he said this really, but apparently he said, Melissa and Teresa not speaking all season is not sustainable. No fucking shit. Duh. So, yeah, no kidding. It's not sustainable. So, I don't think it's sustainable. I can't even believe we have to watch a whole season of Teresa and Melissa not speaking to each other. Like, how is that even going to take place? We know that they don't speak. How are we going to watch this? And once again, it goes back to like a lot of the Kyle stuff that we watched on, on Beverly Hills was boring because we all knew how it played out. Yeah, some of the, Vanderpump is still good, but some of the nuances between Tom and Ariana, we know how it plays out. So I don't know. Again, it goes to the bigger picture of should we start filming reality shows more in real time? I think other stuff will happen this season. Let's see what happens between Cabral and Aiden. Let's see what happens between the Fudas and Teresa. I mean, welcome to the game. Uh, Rachel took over right where Melissa left off. I think it is going to be interesting that these two are not going to speak. But 